Hey everybody, welcome back to Spring Realms, our wonderful little patron server. So we are back at the Great Harbour, which is the current dungeon that we're working on. Not a whole ton of progress has been going on over here at the moment because purely, like, this is this is very much being driven uh, via Aeneas, and Aeneas has had a lot of university work to do on currently, but hopefully by the end of this month we'll have this thing ready to release. But the thing that I am working on today is the mechanics of a bodiless boss, which is to say, the boss, which is which is the harbor master, doesn't have a persistent entity that you can just go up and wail on. It has a uh, sort of collective recurrence, marked, like measured and refined in like document. I'm going for all sorts of words here to say like uh, tracked. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, it has a tracked health score, and then we use that to determine how many times it should respawn, where it should respawn at all, if it should have any drops associated with it, etc, etc, etc. So, the way that we have typically done that, in terms of having bosses with uh, various, di various digits before, is that we would have just used something like this, where we summon an armor stand and we give it a score, so just summoning here, we have uh, Aeneas Boss HP as the tag, and then we have uh, just giving anything with that tag a score of timer 10, where timer is just sort of our generic number variable. And that works all well and good, except that we seem to be having some issues. I don't know if it's like the scoreboard is hitting some kind of limit, um, but it seems as though entities are currently losing their scores in some instances. So, for example, the timers over at the Archive have been having issues with this, we had some issues with that as well, uh, even in like the first dungeon. So it just sort of keeps happening and I don't know what's causing it, so for the time being, at least in the case of this one, I thought it might be better to go for a more mechanical approach. So this is a self-resetting timer, which is using the dropper and the hopper here, so it's just using comparators to check when one of these is empty, and it's you've got a state cell, otherwise known as a D-latch or memory cell, to uh, tell it whether or not this particular hopper should be locked as it currently is. So if we give it a pulse, there's one poppy in here, there's three more in here, we keep going, and eventually it's so it slides off and it resets, and we can use that as a pulse to detect when something should happen. So that, I think, is what we'll do for this particular thing. Now the next thing that we need to determine with this particular boss is when to trigger the boss, because the idea is that you'll go around and you'll start sabotaging things, you'll start breaking things, and that will potentially trigger the boss to spawn. So what we need is some way of knowing when a particular zone has been damaged, and ideally in a very specific way. So you go in and you flip a lever, or you go in and you break a pot, or you go in and you break, smash a window or something. But it shouldn't just be you go in, you place a block, like just, I don't know, a piece of cobblestone that you brought along with you, and oh hey, the boss gets summoned because that's, like, luck. No, you should have to do something very specific to get the boss's attention. So just for the moment, let's assume that we want to be using, uh, that we want to be using uh, a pot, a flower pot, because Zelda came out recently, why not? Uh, so let's summon ourselves an armor stand, and uh, we'll put that two blocks above me, and turn off gravity so it doesn't fall, and we'll give it the tag of uh, NAS boss pot. Why not? Okay, so now we have one of these. And the first thing that we want to do is check to see if it has a pot beneath it. So, test for at E... Uh, ooh, actually no, uh, execute at E tag equals Aeneas boss pot. Doop -de doop -de doop Test for block. Doop doop doop. So two blocks below. Uh, flower pot negative one because I don't really care much about anything else. So with that, grab our comparator, give this a signal, and it will just output nothing because there is no such thing. If we have another little comparator here or another thing, so we want to execute from Nas boss pot set block minus two flower pot. So there it is, 
And now we're detecting it. Okay. So, with that, we now have a means of putting a flower pot wherever we like. We can make these armor stands invisible, no gravity, no indication whatsoever of their presence, but they do allow us to do some special things with this, because otherwise we'd have to hard position. We'd have, we, we, we would have to have an array that just hardwired where all of these flower pots were. So, let's put this on to repeat. And now we want to uh, execute at the tag equals Aeneas boss pot. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Detect two blocks below again, the flower pot. And if we can detect that, then scoreboard players tag at e r equals one, tag equals an AS boss pot, which should basically always, always, always mean themselves. But just in case, we'll have that be C equals one. And we want to set this to air instead of flower pot, because this will detect when there is nothing there. Add needs pot. Okay. So then execute at e tag equals needs pot. Uh, we want to play a sound. So let's see slash play sound. Uh, lock dot or break. Yes, there is. Okay. And ambience at the really bit There we go. That's exactly the one that we want. So we want block.glass.break, we want it to be ambient, we want it to be everybody within, say, eight blocks, and wherever the, blo where, wherever the flower pot is, ideally, should be the location, and let's see, I can never remember if it's pitch, then volume, but either way, I guess we're about to find out. And then we want to do that. So, want needs pot, not an AS pot. And we also want to remove that tag because otherwise it'll just keep doing this. So players tag at e tag equals needs pot remove needs pot. There we go. All right. So we stick that there, and we are now happily replacing it. But I've only got these the wrong way around, or something wrong. Okay, flip. I've clearly gotten... Oh, I see. I completely messed up, the, messed up the command is what happened. Minecraft blip. There. Good. Okay. Uh, and now I can put this back. Hopefully. Right. Nope, that is volume. Okay. It's volume, then pitch. I can never remember. Nice. So using that... What we can do is create a pulse whenever, in this case, a pot is broken. So if we don't get rid of needs pots and we just change that out for something else. So for example, uh, entity data at e tag equals needs pot. And we want to remember to keep giving it the uh, Aeneas boss pot tag. Or else you'll already click this thing so uh, no pot or else only we can get rid of the Aeneas needs pot the, the Aeneas boss pot and then just switch it back to no pot but uh, things that can things that we can do so uh, let's actually just do that exactly so it's entity data that to have only the tag of needs pot so entity data this is one of the really like helpful things that you can do purely when you're dealing with entities is you can check is that you can set every single tag they have overwriting everything else there so I want to change that to no pot and let's just have a little command here so entity data at e tag equals no pot to tags NS boss pot are quick reset if you will so that should cause this to uh, well not to only actually uh, reset and if I grab that and we want to go for no pot or an AS needs pot an AS boss pot there we go 
should fix that up when we pulse it. Uh, but otherwise, we just need this one. Okay, so when we break this, it should make a noise, and it should then have the tag of no pot. So... And then test for at the tag equals a no pot. Found one of them, good. Then we give that, and we should find that there's no longer any more that are missing. So what we can do with that is create a pulse every single time we find a new one of those. Which means we can then, for example, trigger an, a random number generator that summons the boss, potentially. Or other things, but we can, we can also reset it just by resetting all of the ones that don't have their pot, or their whatever block it might be in the end. This is all up to Aeneas. Um, Aeneas has big plans for crisscrossing highways and whatnot that lead to different gantries, I believe is the phrase, inside of this kind of like a dry dock situation. But, uh, I think this is a fun little thing that we can have here. That's not going to get old anytime soon, is it? <laughs> Very simple, honestly, overall. This is just, like, basically this thing. So, uh, what we can do in this particular case, if we just wanted that to, like, decrease health every time that happened, what we could do is uh, just check what block that is. So that's negative 43... 55, 61, and negative 29. We will have a bedrock box for this place eventually, just not right now. Uh, okay, and then we need to move that to there. Okay, and then we want to execute at the tag equals needs pot to set. Oh, missing there. There we are. Uh, set block at those coordinates to uh, redstone block. So now, when we actually break this, then that block over there will turn to redstone. Which should then, yep, trigger one of these poppies to come out. Now what we, need to, what we do need to do at that stage is have a delay that runs into here. Ideally we'd also have a pulse, just in case somebody's spamming all of these. Uh, but we want, what we want to do is ensure that that block is then returned. So let me see what's... Okay, that's fine. All right. Set block that to... Uh, I usually go with stained glass of some distinctive colour, but for now we'll go with that. There we go. So, if we reset this, so we have our pot back, then we should see that there are now two over here. So there we go. So with that, we can use the sound, more or less, as a cue for when we trigger some other part of the redstone, namely the RNG. Um, I might be doing a Book of Lying sooner on exactly how you can do RNGs in this game, but uh, for now, that is a really quick little thing. So we're using the armor stand method. We can have any number of these uh, pots to break, <laughs> these, these things to foul up. Um, we can have them drop special things if we wanted to as well. So for example, we could uh, summon an emerald whenever <laughs> you actually break the pot. I don't think I will do that, but that's something you can do. Um, but we can also summon monsters and have special things happen. Uh, what, we can, what we're also going to need is a sort of a marker of how much interest the uh, boss currently has, how agitated the boss is, which will alter its uh, likelihood for actually spawning when you break one of these things, rather than just doing something funky around you. Uh, but we can use, uh, let me see, that signal to indicate whether or not they're, whether, whether or not the boss currently needs to be needs to have the opportunity to respawn. Sorry, I'm talking very quickly this episode, aren't I? Because <laughs> my brain is in my brain is in overdrive going through these kinds of things. This, this is a lot of fun for me. But uh, that signal basically is how much health the boss has left. This signal is how much health the boss has lost. And once it reaches the zero point, that's when we summon an actual entity. So, for example, uh, if I summon... Uh, uh, I can't summon a zombie in here because the uh, things will stop it, but if I summon a chicken <laughs> and we give it custom name Harbour Master, because why not? And what we want to do here is def loot table. I'm going to have so much editing to do with regards to uh, all of the commands I've been putting into there. Uh, def loot table empty. So if I do that, then if I hit it, Nothing comes out. If instead I have that command 
and I give it the loot table of, say, uh, entities. I think it's gonna be Wither Boss. It's hard for me to remember these things because Minecraft is not necessarily clear on them. Uh, nope, that ain't it. But I can probably give it something else. So if we go with Zombie, perhaps? Will it allow me Zombie? There we go, zombie. Might just be Wither, I don't know, because it, it's listed as Wither boss in the actual things, which is weird. But, either way. So, what we will do before that signal hits zero is we just summon the empty one, which means you'll get none of the boss loot. And then once it actually does hit zero, we start using this one. So, that gives us the opportunity to have a recurring boss that you have to fight, and then there's a big beefy one at the end who's actually like, Right now, playtime's done, I'm going to murder you all. Which is a, a lovely little kind of dyna dynamism thing, and it gives us this, this nice kind of view of continuity. Where uh, before he'll warp away, but this time, nope, nope, this time he's going to hurt. <laughs> Although in this case, he probably won't be a chicken. But yeah, so I say that's how we will do that based on that signal, which, really, which enables us to have different, basically two different versions of the boss. We could have even more if we wanted to, by changing up the loot tables, changing up the uh, ability sets, all based on the output that's coming out of this, because we can tap into the exact state of that, either by using test for blocks or by just directly using this comparator symbol. So, he really cool. Which also means we can have uh, different things happen depending on the boss's health. So, for example, when the boss is at low agitation, when the boss doesn't have any really significant volume of lost health, then we can have them do uh, just sort of annoyance things around the, around the harbour, just sort of deterrence. So every now and then they'll maybe summon a zombie on you, or just like, make you go blind, or something. Uh, or maybe they'll teleport you around a bit more, who knows. But uh, when you start to actually, just like, when you start to really irritate them, then the Harbour Master can get really irritated, and start doing some really big, more uh, dangerous things. So to the point where at the end they, they actually turn up in full fashion, but earlier on they might do Things like if you poison, or wither, or summon skeletons, or, end or endermen, or all sorts. So many options. But, uh, anyways, I am running out of breath because my brain's going a mile a minute. So I hope you've understood some of what I've been talking about today. And I'll catch you all next time. <laughs>